Hello creators, welcome back to Create, Share, and Give. This is Mayat Marie, and if you're new to my channel, thank you for coming in. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. This is a place where I am documenting my spiritual journey and sharing my gifts with the world. So today, I am going to share with you and do a share slash book report on one of my favorite new ancestor african tradition religion herbal history books of all time and it is none other than working the roots working the roots over 400 years of traditional african american healing by michelle e lee now i got this book actually for my birthday last year in May and when I saw the cover just the energy I knew that I had to have it for number one number two that the information was going to be just amazing and yes it lived up to every expectation that I have had so without further ado I would like to go into working the root there are three sections to this book the first section, she interviews elders, ancestors, wise women and men, and healers. Now, this is the part one, which she calls the healing narratives. Now, these are the hands of Sally McCloud. Now, Sally McCloud of her in her garden, picking her fresh herbs and vegetables. And Sally McCloud touched me in so many ways because she reminded me of my great grandmother, Annie Lee, who was a descendant of uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And they looked pretty similar. My Annie Lee had long pigtails and looked like she can be from the Cherokee tribe. And this is Miss Sally McCloud in her garden where she grew her own food for her family, used herbal medicines from where she called the woods to heal herself. First segment of the book, she interviews the elders and they talk about their traditional medicines, how they grew up, how they lived off their land, how they were self-sufficient, um, just their way of life. And you have to respect it. And you have to adore the people that endured what they endured and still made it through and made the best of it and generations prospered. You have to pay homage to that. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so keen on honoring my ancestors and all those who came before. And uh, here's Miss. Sally McLeod, during her interview, she always talked about her yellow root that she used for years. She would boil it and it would be an all over medicinal herbal recipe that kept her well up until this interview. I believe she was 86 years old and said she had only been to the doctor a couple of times in her life. And I think that is commendable of the way of life and their uses of herbs. She also talks about root, yellow root, and the bonzette. And these were herbs that grew in her woods that was accessible to everyone around. So everyone would go and take part and pull the roots from herbs that they wanted to use. And I like that sense of community. They had to work together and they worked together as one, as a community. This is Miss Sally McCloud sniffing her snuff. And my great grandmother, Annie, she sniffed snuff also. And I remember her doing it. So that's another uh, aspect of Sally, Sally McCloud that reminded me of my grandmother. Now here is Pete Smith who has a farm in South Carolina. And this is Mr. Pete on the cover here. And the funny thing about Mr. Pete's uh, farm, this is him picking his peas. 
and Michelle Lee, while she interviewed Mr. Lee, uh, she went to his garden and she wanted to volunteer and pick peas. So his setup was you can go to his farm, you can pick a basket of peas or whatever produce he was uh, harvesting at the time and you'll be paid by the basket. So by the end of the day, she had maybe two or three peas in her basket. <laughs> so that lets you know how strenuous and hard the work of a farmer is. So with all due respect, you know, for us to even honor um, the farmers who farm our food today and harvest it to get it to us to the um, grocery store. It seems so simple to go up, I need carrots. Let me go pick up a, a bunch of carrots. You know, I need kale without really paying tribute to those who made it happen, who grew it, who did the hard work of harvesting. I think that farming has been devalued, but um, I really honor them and their hard work. This is a few people in his farm. Now this is Joe Hayes. Now Joe Hayes reminds me of an like man's man who were the type of men from a certain era that knew how to just be men and take care of their families and hold their households down. Now what John Hayes would do, he would go into the woods and track water sources um, with his um, I think it's called a sit. It's a water stick, W A D A stick, and he would go in and he would feel the electricity within the grounds in the forest and know where to start the irrigation system to pull water to different farms in the surrounding area. And some people later on had pendulums. They would use pendulums. But he had a prophetic dream one day while he went to sleep in the woods. And he said after that dream, he had that innate power to know where the water source was. So I thought that was amazing. So everyone that she interviewed just has a unique story. They're unique, but at the same time, they all come together. And it's all the same story on living with mother nature, on cultivating their own food on their land and being content and happy with that and having the ability to do it. That's the message I take from it. Now this is Osila Harris. They call her Miss Dot. And her quote is, my mother didn't carry us to no doctor. And she goes into a lot of the family recipes that she remember her mother going out like the Jimson weed for headaches. So she goes in to uh, tell her story and her healing that happened within her family. Now this is the marsh in South Carolina, Sea Island, where the Gullah Geechee people live. Now, I am so fond of the Gullah Geechee heritage, the people. They lived after the last slave owner, colonizer, left the land. The land was left to the people. And they cult continued to cultivate it. And they lived in a self-sufficient way for many, many years. So on my bucket list, I definitely want to go to South Carolina and see if I can feel some of the heritage of the Gullah Geechee culture. And I saw a documentary on them recently and they were basically saying how they were being gentrified because it's lot nice land right off the water. So of course they want to put resort centers there and have it more of a tourist land versus the people that are living there that are taking care of themselves. So I'll be watching that story and I hope that they, you know, 
don't go too far with the gentrification where people are moving out. This is chapter two, and this is on the black Native American powwow. So she goes into the Native American culture as well. The black Native Americans that were here on the land. And I thought that was pretty interesting. You'll learn a lot if you're interested in that. If you watch Dane Calloway and different people with their theory, then you would like to have that story. I'm happy she incorporated that into the culture. That's how rich it is. It's just not one culture. It's many cultures mixed together as one. Now, this is Mr. Hunter Woods. No, I'm sorry, Miss Hunter Woods. Now, this is a story on Miss Hunter Woods. And this is the beautiful artistry that she's creating out of quilts. Now, quilts are a real piece of art. I would like to learn how to make quilts is on my bucket list. As soon as I get around to it, I have so many things that I'm learning and doing. But quilt making is a true art that's been around for hundreds of years. And one of her quotes that I really like, and she states here, if you could make stuff with your hands, then you will always have money. And me being an artist working with my hands, I know that to be true. Technology, yes, we have to jump on that bandwagon, but the artistry of the hands, that's something that can never be duplicated. It can never be duplicated. Now here she goes into, this is Mo Ramona Moore, Big Eagle, and her statement is, that's how smart we were. On the contrary, these were beautifully, highly intelligent, highly productive people that made life here on earth uh, pleasurable and uh, as, as much as they could under the circumstances because you can't hold a good person down. So I enjoyed reading her story and she goes here into making some of her... Uh, Medicine bags, which is next on my list because every good healer and medicine woman must have a medicine bag. So I'll make a video on that once I finish that journey. Here is Miss Ruth Patterson sitting on her porch. And the porch is a very special place. It reminds me of sitting on the porch with my grandmother when I would visit her in Birmingham, Alabama sitting on the porch and just speaking about life and enjoying life and drinking tea and watching the sun set. Look for her fly, <laughs> her fly swatter, <laughs> because if you're in the South, you're going to need a fly swatter and the brick. So all that reminds me of parts of my childhood. These are some pictures of the medicine bags. Okay, now, part of the interview chapter, she interviews some of the great mystic women. And she goes into them, they talk about their uh, African traditional religions, how they got started, and their journey with them. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, she even has Louisa Tish, which is one of the um, people, practitioners she interviewed, which if you've seen several of my videos, I rave about the book Jambalaya, and she's the author of that book. So I was happy to see her included in this amongst other women telling their story. Now she goes into... Some of the wise tales, artifacts of history. Now, this book is one of those books, if you didn't have your ancestors to pass down information on healing, 
on history, on religion, then I would suggest this book for sure for you. Because going through these stories and these women, you will find your story. And you will get what you need to get. If something pops out, that's the message from you. Because we don't always get messages from people that are here. It's people that have left information. And that's one thing I really, really admire about this book. And Michelle Lee taking her time to put it together. Is she leaving those nuggets of griots that are no longer here to tell the story but now you have a collection of people with different experiences to pull from and you can use that here and now and today and that is worth this weight in gold here is Imani Arjunik Apocathery she has a botanica in Northern California, Oakland, California, and I haven't Googled it to see if it's still there. Here we have some of the tools used in African traditional religions, such as the Efun and Cascaria the ailments and the medicines and part two goes into looking into different ailments and giving you medicinal resources to use to heal yourself and I thought this was very important I even took a few uh, recipes and recommendations from this section and it worked out really well for me so everything from uh, seasonal tonics and teas, uh, fire cider, cider tonic, upper respiratory, external preparation, arthritis, rheumatism, allergies, athlete's foot, boils and cysts. So I, I am sure you will find this section really valuable it is a must if you're a healer or if you are on your spiritual path you must have this book in your collection something on bronchitis so this chapter goes all into the healing of particular ailments just look up whatever you want to look up and they're all herbal based And after she goes on, goes through the different elements, the next section is the herbal definition, purpose. And that one is, again, worth its weight in gold. This goes through the different herbs. They give you the botanical names of each herb that's used. She also gives you other names known as the medicinal properties, the health benefits, and the preparation and application. So you have a lot of information on how to work with it. All the other herbal books I have, they don't include uh, this much information. It may give you the name, the scientific name, but it doesn't go into ways you can get started using it. And this right here is a brilliant. I'm happy she put that in the book. Again, it will be your best friend. Even some of the things uh, she have in here, like here is the black drop tea, which I don't think they make it anymore, but I looked up some of the images online and it was just interesting to see the old packaging of it and how they used it. Black gum tree, how to use black tar soap, blackberry root. So this right here, if you're into any type of herbal remedies, healing, you need this information. Like it is one of the best that I have. And I have a few herbal books. So then after she goes through the herbal, you get a good hundred pages of just information. And a lot of these herbs in here are some that I don't see in the typical herb book.
There is also a few recipes in here. Here she has the uh, a nice gumbo recipe from one of the elders. And I love trying different uh, recipes. The spider web was used for a suture to heal wounds and to help heal cuts. So how genius was that? I, I would have never thought to use a spider web, but when you uh, have limited resources and you can pull from them resources and make a lemon aid out of lemons, you were a brilliant, smart, resilient people. And that's why I like to honor you. But you get so much information, I just can't stress. Here she has different... Uh, folk remedies to some of the hoodoo recipes you can use. Here is to ward off evil and for protection. Goofer dust, how to use coscaria. High John Conquer root, how to use that, how to smudge. So she does give you some magical tools to use as well as the internal medicinal purposes. And here is, we're going to end it with a picture of Sally McCloud. Now, Sally McCloud, the way she talked about that yellow dock root and how much it helped her family and she would drink it like as an elixir to keep her healthy for over 80 years. Of course, I had to go out and get me some yellow dock root in honor of Miss Sally McCloud. And this just had to go in my apothecary. So, without further ado, don't sleep on this book. It is a must-have, and it is now part of my collection, and it's definitely in my top five favorite herbal and ancestry books that I have in my library. Thank you so much, and till we meet again, take care.